Welcome to our video on the illegal oil palm plantations in Indonesia. Did you know that 1 in 5 hectares of oil palm plantations in Indonesia is illegal? That's right, 20% of the land used for palm oil production in Indonesia is not properly licensed or managed. Illegal oil palm plantations often lead to environmental destruction and human rights violations. These plantations are often established on protected forests or peatlands, which causes deforestation and destruction of habitats for endangered species like orangutans. The tree map has revealed that a fifth of Indonesia's oil palm plantations are operating illegally within designated forest areas. These criminal plantation operators are destroying carbon-rich rainforests, emitting vast amounts of greenhouse gases, and threatening the survival of endangered species like orangutans and tigers. The report identified 600 palm oil companies, out of 2,056 registered firms in Indonesia, with plantings larger than 10 hectares that are operating illegally inside forest areas, occupying 1.55 million hectares, or half of the illegal plantations. These companies generate close to 104 million metric tons of carbon emissions annually, contributing to climate change. The report states that the Indonesian government is not enforcing laws to prevent deforestation on public lands or fulfilling its climate commitments, thereby governing in the interest of corporate elites. The illegal operations also endanger the lives of indigenous and rural communities living in the affected areas, which are now prone to life-threatening heat waves, flooding, and annual fires due to extensive forest clearance. A new report by Greenpeace and the Tree Map has shown that approximately one-fifth of Indonesia's palm oil plantations are illegally operating within designated forest areas, leading to the destruction of carbon-rich rainforests and displacement of threatened species such as orangutans and tigers. The illegal plantations occupy a Belgium-sized area of 3.12 million hectares or 7.7 .7 million acres, inside areas designated by the government as protected zones. Greenpeace and the tree map identified at least 600 plantation companies with plantings larger than 10 hectares that are operating illegally inside forest areas, including parts of national parks, Ramsar wetlands, and UNESCO World Heritage Sites. These illegal plantations generate close to 104 million metric tons of carbon emissions annually, which is equivalent to 60% of the global aviation industry's annual emissions. The report also identified the top 25 companies with the largest plantations inside these protected areas, which together operate 22,924 hectares of plantations in protected forests and 13,353 hectares in conservation areas. In addition, these illegal operations have displaced wildlife from their habitat, including orangutans, elephants, and tigers. Teso Nilo National Park in Sumatra, which is notable for its critically endangered Sumatran tigers and elephants, has the largest area occupied by oil palm plantations of all protected areas in Indonesia, with 16,362 hectares of oil palm plantations identified inside the park. The illegal activities of some of the companies certified under sustainability schemes such as the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil and the government's Indonesian Sustainable Palm Oil Programme. The RSPO requires its members to comply with all applicable national laws and regulations, including not operating in a forest area. However, Greenpeace found RSPO member plantation companies operating across 283,686 hectares of forest areas, with at least eight of them having more than 10,000 hectares of illegal plantations. These companies are Sana Mas, Wilma, Musam Mas, Budhope, Chitra Bonio Inder, Genting, Bumitma, and Saim Dabi. Sana Mas is the largest of these companies with 57,676 hectares of oil palms inside forest areas, followed by Wilma with 50,593 hectares and Musam Mas with 36,481 hectares according to the report. Some RSPO members also operate inside conservation areas and protected forests. Sana Mas, for instance, has 1,989 hectares of plantations in conservation areas. Greenpeace has lodged complaints against these companies with the RSPO, but the complaints have been closed even though past violations haven't been addressed. Greenpeace cited the case of Genting Group's three plantation companies in central Kalimantan province, which carried out clearing inside designated forests. RSPO closed the complaint in 2019 on the basis that Genting had applied to the government to have the designation changed in 2016. However, the bulk of the clearing occurred from 2009 to 2012, and the Environment Ministry hasn't approved Genting's request to have the forest designation dropped. That means Genting's activities inside the forest areas were still illegal when the RSPO closed the complaint, Greenpeace said. RSPO Assurance Director Theo Rumondang called Greenpeace's data incomplete and said it needed to be validated first with RSPO data. 
Tiur said RSPO members found violating the scheme's rules and procedures by planting inside forest areas must undertake remediation and compensation procedures. Some RSPO members have admitted that they've done illegal clearing, she said. So there are liabilities that have to be completed in the next 25 years to recover, the environmental damage done by the illegal planting, the Indonesian government's own sustainability label, the ISPO, is also held by companies with illegal plantations. More than 200 ISPO certified companies, or a quarter of its members, operate a combined 252,202 hectares of plantations in forest estates, according to the Greenpeace report. And as with the RSPO certified companies, Greenpeace also found ISPO members to be planting inside conservation areas and protected forests, with 14 ISPO certified concessions in the former. Unlike the RSPO, which is voluntary, the ISPO is mandatory for all palm oil companies operating in Indonesia. But the widespread flouting of its rules could jeopardize the scheme's stated aims of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and increasing international market acceptance of Indonesian palm oil, according to Greenpeace. In response to the findings, 17 companies signed a joint reply, saying they had complied with the prevailing Indonesian laws and regulations on land permit usage for oil palm plantations. Among the companies are producer groups with some of the largest operations inside forest areas, such as Museum Mass, Genting Plantations, Golden Agri Resources and Wilma. Companies continue to operate illegally inside forest areas due to lax law enforcement and government policies. Despite reports from green groups and local communities demanding legal action against these companies, there have been very few criminal charges brought by police and prosecutors. In 2017, the Kalimantan Legal Aid Institute reported at least 13 companies in West Kalimantan province to the Environment Ministry, including companies operating inside protected forests, conservation areas, and national parks. However, no legal action has ever been taken against them since. The government has issued three increasingly lenient amnesties between 2012 and 2020, which give violating companies a grace period to apply to have the land redesignated as non-forest area or for a forest land swap. The latest amnesty comes in the controversial omnibus law on job creation, passed last year, which ushers in a wave of deregulation across a range of industries, including rolling back environmental protections and incentivizing extractive industries such as mining and plantations. Under the omnibus law, companies that meet certain criteria only have to pay fines and obtain permits, including the degazetting of the forest designation, to resume their operations inside forest areas. This provision in the omnibus law has been called an effort to legitimize a crime by Greenpeace, while lawmakers have called the amnesty, a whitewashing, of a crime. The omnibus law extends the grace period from one year to three years and replaces penal sanctions with administrative penalties. Randha Agum Sugardiman, the Director General of Planning at the Environment Ministry, said this provision in the omnibus law, solves, the environmental violations, committed by plantation companies operating illegally inside forests. According to Greenpeace's analysis, the latest amnesty throws open the door to oil palm plantation companies occupying nearly 666,000 hectares of forest estate that were not previously eligible for retrospective legalization. Greenpeace has reported that companies are operating illegally within Indonesian forests, but efforts to hold these companies accountable have been hindered by a lack of transparency. The Indonesian government has refused to release oil palm concession data and maps publicly, which would increase transparency about concession boundaries and permit holder identities. Civil society groups have long called for the plantation maps to be made publicly available, but the government has cited reasons ranging from intellectual property rights to national security to justify withholding the information. Indonesia's Supreme Court ruled in 2017 that all plantation data and maps across the country should be made publicly available, but the land ministry has repeatedly refused to comply with this ruling. This secrecy has also made it difficult for the companies to confirm the findings of Greenpeace's report. In fact, 17 companies have said they couldn't confirm the report because they have been barred from publishing and sharing their concession maps in digital format since 2020. Greenpeace has called for complete data on concessions, including ownership, maps, and permits, to be publicly released. Forest campaigner Ari said that the government should also publish the list of companies applying to redesignate forest areas into non-forest areas, identifying which applications were approved and which were rejected. However, Greenpeace has only received the list of companies whose requests were accepted, which was only 63 companies out of the 367 identified by Greenpeace as having substantial plantings in forest areas. Ari argued that the government's refusal to publish the list is an opportunity for negotiation and underhanded dealings between government officials and the companies. 
Releasing the list of companies whose applications were rejected, presumably the majority of them, would make it easier for the public to hold them accountable for their illegal plantations. The environmentalist explained that the expansion of illegal oil palm plantations had led to a loss of biodiversity, soil erosion, and water pollution, which had not only affected the environment but also the livelihoods of local communities who depended on the forest for their daily needs. In many cases, local communities have protested against the establishment of illegal oil palm plantations. However, these protests are often met with violence and intimidation by plantation owners and their associates. According to the human rights activist, the establishment of illegal oil palm plantations was associated with human rights violations such as forced labor and land grabbing. The workers on these plantations were frequently exploited, receiving low wages and being required to work in hazardous conditions. Illegal oil palm plantations can be found in many regions of Indonesia, including Sumatra, Kalimantan, and Papua. The Indonesian government has taken steps to address this issue, including the establishment of a task force to investigate and prosecute illegal plantations. As per the government official statement, the Indonesian government had expressed its commitment to addressing the problem of illegal oil palm plantations. The government had set up a task force to investigate and bring to justice those responsible for such unlawful plantations. Additionally, the penalties for those caught engaging in such illegal activities had been increased. In conclusion, the expansion of illegal oil palm plantations in Indonesia is a serious issue that has far-reaching consequences for the environment and local communities. It is important that we continue to raise awareness of this issue and hold those responsible accountable for their actions. Thank you for watching.